Conservative MP for South Cambridgeshire. Andrew Gwynne is the Shadow Secretary of State for local government. He chaired their Labour's recent election campaign. Evening to you both. Hi. Heidi, I'd like to just start with you a minute. Um, so this was a little different to the manifesto, I think yeah. you'd agree. In your view, better than the manifesto? Um, a bit of both. Um, better insofar that I, for me personally, I found that the talk around Brexit and a more consensual approach, I found that very positive because clearly the proposals we had in the Brexit and um, part of the manifesto didn't appeal to the whole electorate. So I think that gives us an opportunity to look that again. Good news around um, some sense about um, public spending for NHS and fair funding, particularly important for schools like mine that have been very under um, thundered for years and years. Mental health, glad to see that's still in there. And actually in a funny way, I'm glad social care is still in there. Yeah, but all the stuff that wasn't <laughs> in there was the action, wasn't it? Because you're, no, you're no fan of fox hunting, you're no fan no grammar no. schools, so, so you so were was delighted pleased. all that got shit. Yeah, absolutely delighted that they've gone. But no, they're not the big things, really. The big things are how do we come up with a solution to fix social care? How do we fund our NHS properly? So at least they were still in there. And there's, um, you know, it opens a dialogue about how we do it. Right. And isn't the truth the party's lost the stomach for any kind of austerity now? It's essentially, we're now, it's about, this parliament is about injecting extra money into public services rather than taking it out, right? I'm hoping so. Um, I mean, I don't think we can have a, you know, we do still need to get the deficit down, but I don't think, so I don't think a blanket just pump money in everywhere. But do we need to look, particularly areas like NHS pay, where they, you know, the staff there have been working so hard for years now with very, very modest increases. I think it's time to see whether we can look at their pay again. For schools, clearly, you know, the rebalancing of fair funding formula that was proposed doesn't work. Many of us have said on all sides of the house that the formula doesn't work, so it's an opportunity to look at that. But I, I don't think it would be right to just take away, you know, austerity as it's described across the entirety of the public sector, because that means we will never get our de right. deficit down. But you, you'd be willing for there to be small tax increases or some tax increases to pay for better public services too, if, Potentially. if that's what it took. Yes, I would. Yeah. yeah. Let me bring um, Andrew Gwynn in. Um, there were some more progressive elements in this in this Queen's speech. Will you be supporting those? Well, look, Evan, uh, the fact is we are in a very unusual situation here. We've got a minority government, the first time we've had a minority government since the 1970s, since 1974. And we've got a situation here where we had a prime minister uh, running away from public scrutiny during the election. We've now got ministers running away from public scrutiny on, uh, on this programme and others. Uh, the fact is I'm bitterly disappointed by the Queen's speech because there was no real substance in there. We talk about ending austerity, but actually, where is the substance? Where is, uh, for example, uh, ending the pay freeze for public sector <coughs> well, workers that probably, for nurses? Presumably that comes in a budget. You don't have to put that in the Queen's speech. You can just but, but why do, we do have, it. But the government could signal that now. Why do we have to wait? Why is it always uh, talking about something in the future? There was nothing in there that answers the big issues facing right. the country today and that is our underfunded public services. Right. So, so there wasn't, although Heidi Allen, as you know, thinks that it probably that is, there is going to be some extra money. Come back to my question, will you support the government on the more progressive elements? There were plenty of things, are many of it consultations for example, but will you be constructive and supportive? Because we are stuck in this position in which you didn't get a majority, yeah. they didn't get yeah. a majority, yeah. so it's time to sit yeah. down and be Well, sensible. of course, we can use the Conservatives' logic where they say uh, that uh, a proportion, 82% uh, of the electorate voted for parties that support Brexit. Well, I'll use their logic uh, in reverse. 58% uh, of people voted for parties that were committed to ending, to a lesser or greater extent, austerity. Yeah. Clearly, where there you keep, you keep banging on about austerity. Cle it seems to be a done deal. Well, that, 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 well clearly that, where that there are measures that we can support, measures that right. were in the Labour Party's very progressive manifesto, uh, we will support those. But we will also be using every mm. parliamentary procedure, Evan, to push forward Labour's manifesto right. because... But hang on a minute. Sorry, did I miss something? Did you get a majority? Did no you get the support well, of the voters? No, did you I get more votes than like the Conservative Party? Well, the, 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 the point there, is, Andrew? Evan, uh, we increased our share of the vote. We increased what, 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 our number what, what, of seats. When was the increasing your share and of the vote a mandate for well, putting your manifesto into the, the Parliament the, the, the point when the other party well, got more votes? Well, the point votes. is, and you've already said this, no party got a majority. Right. And, and she's junked half of their manifesto, and you're saying, well, we'll put our manifesto in. Your manifesto got even fewer votes than well, our manifesto. The, the point is, I think that people recognise 
that yes, we're in a hung parliament and we have to work right. uh, together I mean, isn't on the, just issues. Seriously, isn't this a time for something much more constructive? Either yes. you're going to have an yes. election, you're going to have an election and just say we need to fight it again because Bring no one on. won. You would, you would be up for that. Absolutely. Do you want another election, Heidi? Um, or, do you, or do you sit down and try and find some sort of compromise path that can command a quite I, broad consensus? I would much rather, genuinely much rather do that because I think, you know, we were chatting a little mm. about it in the green room before we came on tonight. So much of this election result, it's like Brexit, it's like the Trump. This is about people saying we have had enough of the established order. Mm. This is time to put the country first. There's a novel concept, isn't it, for those that rule and govern our country. Let's come together mm -hmm. and take your great ideas, my great ideas, and collectively, well, and it's not motherhood and apple pie, it's what the country demands and it's what well, it deserves. No National governments, I'm, I'm quite sure, it would be very popular. But here's the here's reason why it might be a good idea. You, Heidi, are closer to Andrew than you are to the DUP, who are your... It has been suggested. Your, <laughs> your potential <laughs> government support. I mean, what do you think of the way that's all going? I've said it from the word off. I think we should just run with a minority government. Uh, and I know it wasn't mm. a majority, but it mm. did still get the most seats. And I think we should just build a whole new way. So Brexit is a national decision. It should have a national solution, as is the NHS, mm -hmm. as is social care. So many of us, prior to the election, came together to see the Prime Minister say, come on, let's have a cross-party commission on this. You, now is the time to do it. What do you think of that offer then, Andrew? Well, clearly, I where, you, well, clearly <laughs> where we agree on things, of course we want, we all want to improve this country. Mm -hmm. We want this country to be better uh, than it is at the moment. But there are massive differences as well between the parties and we have to recognise that in a hung parliament, uh, parliament itself will decide on some of these right. issues. But the funny thing is, you say there are these massive differences. What everybody knows, both inside London and p particularly outside London, there's a thirst for a quite a big amount of economic change mm -hmm. of the kind that Theresa May articulated on the steps of Downing Street. And I think you could probably agree with quite a lot of what she said on the steps of Downing Street. You may say she didn't well, she's not up. delivered it. No, so, no. But yeah. you could agree with the objectives. That, in a funny sort of way, that isn't where the, the and action also is anymore. You are on the, the hope, same the opportunity, yeah. the vision of a better, fairer, equal Britain that Jeremy, um, you know, put out in the general election Goodness. that really did engage a whole new generation of voters that clearly have not been engaged with the political process. So, so the process. vision is there. We all share the vision. This is about a different journey and between us finding collectively mm -hmm. through Parliament, and mm -hmm. um, because that is our job, to find a common compromise route to get there that therefore potentially might reflect the results of the actual election. Fascinating one. Thanks both very much Thank indeed. You. Thank you.